Every year, tens of thousands of people have their EB2 and IW petition approved. Did you know that? It's a lot of dreams coming true. If you're a professional looking to make the US your home, you're in the right place. Today I'm breaking down how to qualify for the EB2, an essential step in getting the EB2 and IW. And I'll also break down some of the documents that you need here. My name is Stefan Akoli. I'm here to do for you what so many people have done for me throughout the years, and that is to give important information that could maybe change a life or two. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the NIW process or you have a unique situation, contact me. My law firm can help. We handle cases, these EB2 and IW cases from start to finish. Or maybe you just need help with a portion of your case. Still contact me. We offer a la carte services as well. Find my contact information in the description. Write to me. Call me. I mean, I'm not saying I don't have a life outside of my immigration practice, but I do have of the Form I-140. So there's that. Before we get into the specific ways to qualify for the EB2, let's talk about two bridges. Two bridges you need to cross in order to get the EB2 and IW. The first bridge is what we call a bridge to EB2 land. To cross this bridge, you must establish your eligibility for the EB2 category. The second bridge requires you to show that you merit an NIW. But this video is just about crossing that first bridge, all right? Okay, so there are two ways to essentially cross that first bridge. One is showing exceptional ability. The other is showing that you are an advanced degree professional. Let's take a look at each, shall we? With two very big exceptions, this route is for you if you have a master's degree or higher in a field relevant to your proposed endeavor, your proposed work. What does it mean for the degree to be relevant to the proposed work? It means that your advanced degree should be directly related to the work that you propose to do in the United States. For example, if you're planning to work as a software engineer, having a master's degree in computer science would be relevant. It would be related. On the other hand, if you have a master's degree in history and are planning to work as a data scientist, well, your degree would not be relevant. It would not be related. I should say it will not be considered relevant or related. So what documents do you need here? Well, your official academic records like your diploma or your transcript are crucial. Further, if you have a foreign degree, a professional evaluation may be critical to show that your degree is equivalent to the US degree. Now make sure you get this evaluation from a reputable company if you handle your case on your own without a lawyer. A lot of people run into problems when they don't hire a reputable company for this. And if your degree is not equivalent to a US degree, you will run into problems. Countries where degree equivalency issues often arise include Brazil, India, and Pakistan. Now I mentioned some big exceptions. Here's a huge one. Even with a bachelor's degree, not a master's, a bachelor's degree, you might qualify if you can show that you have the bachelor's degree plus five years of progressive work experience in your field. Now to show this progressive work experience, you're going to need strong letters from your current or your former employer. But what is progressive work experience? Progressive work experience means that over time, your job responsibilities have increased in complexity and importance, demonstrating a career trajectory that shows growth. For example, starting as a junior developer and then advancing to becoming a senior developer and then advancing to some team lead position where each role requires a higher level of skill. This would be considered progressive work experience. On the other hand, remaining as a junior software developer for five years without any changes in responsibilities or increased complexity of the job, that would probably not be considered progressive work experience. Now, a quick note about the bachelor's degree plus progressive work experience option. The progressive work experience that you accumulated had to have been accumulated after the bachelor's degree. Also, the bachelor's degree must be in the field of your work. By way of an example, if you got a bachelor's degree in English like I did, and you're an attorney like I am, well, your bachelor's degree would not be sufficient in this case. Let me give you the other big exception here. Some jobs require a doctorate. And if that's true, when it comes to the work that you propose to do, you need a doctorate. A master's degree is not enough. Well, there you have it. That is the advanced degree option. This is where things get more interesting. Proving exceptional ability. To prove this, you'll need documentation showing at least three of the following six, kind of seven, things. One, official academic records. You'll need a degree or a diploma or certificate from a college or university or institute of higher learning. This documentation must show that you have a degree in your area of claimed expertise. 
Two, evidence of 10 years of experience. Evidence from current or former employers that show that you have at least 10 years of full-time experience in your profession. The evidence can be in the form of letters or affidavits. Those are options, not the only options, but options, certainly options. Three, a required license or certification. This license or certification must be necessary, not optional. To be clear, we're talking about a license that allows you to work in your profession. That license must be required for you to be able to work in your profession. So you're gonna want to submit evidence that shows the license is required for you to be able to work in your profession. Four, evidence of high salary due to your exceptional ability. Show that your significant earnings are a direct result of your exceptional ability. Remember, it's not enough just to show that you commanded a high salary. Though you do need to show that your salary in comparison to a typical salary is high, but you also need to show that you commanded a high salary because of your exceptional ability. A common mistake is failing to show that, leaving it unclear whether you have a high salary, a comparably high salary due to your role, I don't know, combining two roles, two jobs into one essentially, or some other reason not related to you having exceptional ability. Five, current membership in professional organizations. Highlight your involvement in professional groups relevant to your field. Here you might present your membership card or your name in the membership ledger as evidence. Just remember when it comes to this, it's important that your membership is current at the time when you submit the petition. Six, recognition for significant contributions to your industry. This is a big one. Here you're going to want to make sure that the recognition comes from industry peers or professional organizations or a business organization or a government entity. And don't look at contributions that you've made just to a specific company. Instead, focus on contributions that you've made to the industry as a whole. And it has to be in the industry where you claim exceptional ability. And make sure your evidence shows how you developed the significant contribution, how others in the industry know about it, and how others use it. Seven, seven is a catch-all category wherein other comparable evidence is acceptable. This might include, by way of example, mainstream media coverage of you or your work, or examples of some of your significant innovations, or some of your peer-reviewed publications. Now, if you're ready to take the next step in your EB2 and IW journey, my firm is here to help. Oh yeah, subscribe to this channel because there are more videos like this on the way.